in the house and online. We are so glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to open our service this morning a little bit differently since this is the, the season of expecting our Lord and Savior. So we all know this traditional song. We're just going to say it's joy to the world. The Lord has come. If you feel like joining in with us today, that's all right. Help us lift up the name of the Lord. We are here to give him praise. We are here to honor him. We are here to worship him. into this season. We want to thank you so much for joining us online as well as in person this morning. My name is Andrea Hoosman. I am your worship leader. I like to start with some words called real joy. It said, what is Christmas without Jesus Christ? It is a holiday full of stuff, money, stress, teaching kids greed. Some people are saying enough. Love one another this morning, Union. Our Savior said, it's all about love not things. Let's teach our children to serve and create the real joy of true Christmas friends. Thank you so much for giving us another day to say thank you. Thank you so much to give you give us another day to say that we love you, we appreciate you, and we definitely adore you. Please come into our services so that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit and the nourishment of your word. All these things we ask in your wonderful and most amazing name. Amen. Thank you. 
and the Liddell family this morning lighting the, at the fourth advent candle. We light the fourth candle reminding us that the way of following Jesus is the way of righteousness, trust, and faithfulness. And our scripture reference for the morning is Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth into Galilee, in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. O oh God, we have watched for your coming with longing and expectation, with patience and with hope. Now, as the prophets promised so long ago, you have come to us once again, and with the shepherds we are filled with wonder and amazement. Amen.
Anybody know that the Lord is good today? Yeah. He is good and his mercy endureth forever. We thank him in this season for sending his son just to save us from a world of sin and shame, to lift us up out of darkness. He, he took our feet out of what they call the miry clay and set it on a rock to stay. And we just want to thank him, praise him, glorify him, and honor him today for his goodness, for his mercy, for his kindness that woke us up this morning and started us on our way and allowed us to be here in his presence just one more time. So I'm going to ask you to help us to lift up the name of the Lord today. And if you feel like standing on your feet, we all know the words to this song. It just says, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. We can say that. Can I get two or three of you to stand up and help us lift up the name of the Lord today? Yes, you are. 
and you are, you are good all the time and all the time. You are good, you are good all the time and all the time. You are good, you are good all the time and all the time. You are good, you are good all the time and all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, all the time, all the time. You are good, Lord, you are good. you are good, you are good and your mercy is always forever. All right now. From generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. Everybody put your hands together and give God a hand praise on this morning. Give God another hand praise. Give God another hand praise. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. Amen. How do you feel this morning, Union? Let me say that again. I'm going to do a mic check. How do you feel this morning, Union? Give God another hand, pray. Show God how much you love him this morning on this wonderful December 18th, 2022. Getting ready to go into a brand new year. Amen. How many of you are expecting to go into the brand new year? Amen. Amen. How many of you were expecting to wake up this morning? Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. Amen. And for that, I love him. For that, I love him. Some, somebody shout out, I love Jesus this morning. Amen. We, we, we used to do this some years ago. I want everybody to stand up if you're able to stand up. We did this some years ago. And, and, and we just want you to make some noise right now. Just make some noise for the Lord. If you are able to stand up on your feet... Just show God how much you love him this morning. We got to shake off. We got to shake off some stuff. Amen. We got to let some stuff go. I know we've had some hard weeks and some, but this is the day that the Lord has made. We got to shake it off, you all. We got to move on. This is a brand new day. We're going into a brand new day, a brand new week. Amen. I mean, last week was some, some challenging things going on in our, in our experiences, in our homes, in our jobs, and and uh, out and about, but this is a new week, amen? Amen. I'm going to ask that you pray with me as we go right into this, this fourth word for Advent. Pray with me. Holy Spirit, holy power, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my soul be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. 
the church, the people of God said, Amen. 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 It is good to see you this morning. Amen. It is good to see you this morning. It's good to be seen this morning. Amen. And welcome to all of those who are online this morning as we go into this fourth word, this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we understand it and getting ready for Christ the King, Jesus Christ to come into our lives. Amen. How many of you just need Jesus right about now? I need Jesus right about now in my life. Yeah. In my personal life, I need Jesus right about now. Yeah. And so we're going to go into this word and explore how Jesus brings this fourth gift to us. But before I say this, and we're talking about love this morning, before I go into this word, I want you to know Love yourselves so much. You ought to love yourself so much that you don't need to turn to others for love. Can you believe that? Love yourself so much that you don't need to turn to anybody to look for love. I'm going to ask that you would turn to Ephesians Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to go right into the fourth verse. We'll be working from the fourth verse to the seventh verse this morning. And my subtitle is Spiritual Blessings in Christ. Spiritual Blessings in Christ. God made sure that we would receive spiritual blessings in Christ. And we find it here in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. Listen to this. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To praise, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption. Somebody say redemption. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. I want to stop right there. May God add a blessing to the reading to the hearing, and especially to the doing of his holy word. I can say I love you all day long. I, I, can y'all look at me for a minute? I, I, I can tell you I love you all day long. Have mercy, somebody. You know, my wife always tell me, you tell me you love me, show me. Make our mouths say anything all day long. But it's not until I show you that I love you, that I move out of my, my comfort zone into the area where you may need to see the love rather than hear the love. We've talked about the three gifts that characterizes the Advent season, the coming of Jesus Christ. We talked about the believer's way of hoping, how we hope. We don't speak of hope as the world speaks of hope, as if we are not sure about the promise of Jesus Christ. So we don't speak of hope as the world speak of it. Hope is not a, a gamble, a chance. It's, it's not a fleeting feeling. 
Hope is the foundational, is foundational to faith. Like protein builds muscles. And muscles give us strength to lift. To lift up that weight. Hope acts in the same way. Hope builds faith. Hope is expectant. Hope holds on. We talked about peace. Jesus gives us peace, that, uh, that peace with God that gives us the power to perseverance. And perseverance produces character. All right, somebody. And, and, and character gives us that hope, and hope never disappoints us because God has poured out his love into our hearts. And hope help us to hold on. And then we talked about joy. That unspeakable joy of, of just knowing Jesus, that unspeakable joy. How many of you felt joy this morning, just getting up this morning, able to hear the long clock, able to just feel the joy of Jesus? And, and the spirit that was given to you helped you to hold on to that joy, to push through the things that you know that are still on the back burner and not resolved. But I got joy this morning. I got joy this morning. And that means my joy won't let me give up this morning. Jesus will always jumpstart the joy in your life. Joy, my friends, is an inside job. The world Come on, somebody know what I'm getting ready to say. The world didn't give it to you. And the world can't take it. Amen. This morning I want to talk about the fourth symbol I want to talk about. That, that Jesus offers us love. So we talked about hope and peace and joy. And we want to talk about, we want to talk about love. Everybody is talking about it. Everybody is singing about it. Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? It's nothing but a mixed emotion. The Beatles said, all we need is love. That's old school. I ain't got too many. Yes, I got a whole lot of old school. <laughs> Al Green said, love and happiness. Love will make you do some strange things. Make you come home early. Make you stay out all night. The whispers said, it's a love thing. Yeah, everybody is talking about it. Everybody is talking about love. So let's hear what God is saying to Paul about love in Ephesians 1, 4 through 7. When love comes down, the text said that God chose us. How about that? That God was thinking about you, thinking about me. God chose you. He had his thumbprint on you. He had his mind on you. You see, what that means is no matter who doesn't accept you or appreciate you, God chose you. You're in the family of faith. God chose you. Love came down and, and picked you. 
You, out of all people, God picked you. You know, growing up, I remember we used to have these neighborhood basketball tournaments. And I lived in the block of Heber, 5600 Heber, the horseshoe they called it. And, and, and team captains would, would choose their players to be on their team. And since I was the shortest player out there, but I was always competitive and wanted to play. But no one would choose me first. They would overlook me or go around me and choose all the players that had the height. I didn't have the height. But I found a way to get into the game anyway. And I got into game by being the referee of the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm going to call the shots in the game. Amen. No one wanted the scrubs, but later I learned that in life that God had already chosen me to do something different. And so this morning, I want to just express God's love to you and just pull it out and say, you may not have fame or fortune. You may not grew up on the other side of the track. You may have not gone to the most popular high school. You may have not graduated from high school. No college degree, but God chose you. God picked you out of a lineup. You may not have this or you may not have that, but God put his thumbprint on you and he says you belong to me. Love came down and claimed you. Amen. How about that? How about that? Love didn't leave anyone out. Didn't cut the mustard. Didn't qualify. Got voted out, dropped from the team. Well, I don't know who I'm talking to. But God so loved the world that even when we were on the fast track to destruction, blind and could not see, love came down to rescue us. His love came down to wash away stains that others left behind, make us clean. Love came down and chose you. Some of us were one bad decision away from experiencing disaster. You were headed for a breakdown from that beatdown that, ca that caused a meltdown. And something was trying to get you to go snap, crackle, and pop. But God stepped into time, snatched you out of Satan's lineup, snatched you out of Satan's grip because in love he predestined us to be adopted as his very own. Watch this. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 Wake up. He's about to say something. Adoption. Adopted. He adopted us. Did you know that God has the largest adoption agency in the world? Oh, we ought to give God a hand praise for that for looking at us when no one else would look at you. Accept you when everybody else rejected you. Come on, somebody. Everybody didn't agree with you. Everybody didn't come to you and say, yes, I love you. Yes, I'm going to agree with you. There were times when you wanted folk to agree with you and they did not. They turned a cold shoulder on you. They act like that you didn't even exist. Amen. And guess what? God will never turn a cold shoulder. And God will always keep his eyes on you because God loves you. God chose you. God is with you. God supports you. That great idea that you had to start your own business and everybody else said it won't work. God says it will work. Hmm. Watch this. God has the largest adoption agency in the world. 
And God doesn't run it like the world runs his adoption agency. You won't get turned down. And there's plenty of room at the table. And there's good hot food for you. Man does not eat by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so guess what? That's good food. That's not fast food. That's not quick food. That's not junk food. That's good food. When it comes out of the word of God. The mouth of God. That is good food. Guess what God has the best food and the best table you belong to God and Jeremiah 29 11 says I know the plans I have for you I know what I have in store for you you are in the blueprint church You are in the blueprint. You are a part of that sketch that God is preparing for all of us through the love of Jesus Christ. If it had not been for Jesus on our sides, if Jesus never existed, where would we be? It's through the love of God that God gives us Jesus that we are, we are sketched, watch this, we are sketched into the blueprint. You're in the blueprint. You see, God doesn't look at us like the world looks at us. The world sees our failures, our mistakes, our setbacks. The world looks at our faults. The world will criticize. But in Jesus, God looks at you through the eyes of love. Your very own, the creation. He created you out of the creation, the very own. Jesus sees our needs. Anybody, anybody this morning need to be loved? I don't know who might be. I'm talking anybody need to be loved. Well, you need to just feel love, amen. Have you just need to say time out? I need some love right now. Yeah, have you ever had one of those weeks where it was just all crashing in on you? Everything seemed like it was just going downhill on you. And it just everything just turned upside down. And it's a time when you just need to say, time out. I need some love, Jesus. I need to feel love, Jesus. We say this phrase in my house. We just, we just use it every time we get an opportunity. Uh, show me some love. Have y'all ever heard that phrase? Show me some love. Show me some love. Yeah, we'll walk around the house and, and, and we'll say, show me some love. I'll, I'll say, show me some love, honey. Show me some love. She'll, she'll say, show me some love. You see, that means one of us wants the other person to do something for them. Show me some love. Show me some love. Have you ever used that before? Have you ever used that Show me some love. Yeah. You know, I say it to her like this. When I say I love you more than you love me, I I, I mean I love you more than the bad days ahead of us. I love you more than any fight we will ever have. I love you more than any obstacle that could ever try and come between us. I love you more. Oh, I want to tell the church that this morning. I love you more than any fight we might uh, come into contact with. I love you more than anything we might disagree with. I love you more than anything that's going to try and separate us. I love you more than the hand of Satan that's going to try to pull us apart. I love you more. Can somebody say, I love you more? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I love you more. I love you more. I love you more than our disagreement. I love you more because we walk in a different way. I love you more. Not because, just because. Agape love, you all. I love you more. It doesn't matter how many times one person might ask the other person, doesn't matter because we know that love never keeps count we don't go around in my house about keeping count of well I did this for you now it's time for you to do it for me we don't do that because I love her more are y'all with me this morning I love her more you can't you can't irritate me to the point where I stop loving you 
Imagine how God would feel. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all are going to get that on the way out. <laughs> you know how many times we probably irritate God? You, can you imagine how many times we probably, we are walking in the opposite way of where God wants us to walk? Well, guess what? God is not going to ever quit, keep, uh, he's not going to ever stop loving us. He'll keep loving us. I love you more. We don't keep count because we know love doesn't, it doesn't keep a count. Love is patient and love is kind. It, it does not envy. It does not boast. It's not, it's not proud. You know, I'm always wrong and she's always right. Y'all, that's, that's okay. That's, that's how marriage ends up. Like, yeah, I'll move on. No, no, no. It's not proud. It's not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It, it keeps no records of mistakes, wrongdoing. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. Love, love always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, we're always hoping. It always preserves and always, always, it's always, love is always loving. There isn't a time that God says, I'm through loving you. There isn't a time that you can find in the Bible where anything can separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that. There isn't a time. I don't care if you're bad, nice, naughty. But he's going to always love us. This is love we're talking about. This is genuine, agape love, unconditional love. Love always love. And the Beatles says it, all we need is love. All we need is love. All we need is love. Love. Love is all we need. I know that song because I've been practicing at the play. You have been blessed, the Bible says, you have been blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Jesus. Wow. Every blessing, Jesus? Every blessing. Did you forget something? I didn't leave anything out. Oh, see, I may need a certain kind of love this way, and, 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 and Renee may need a love that way. He's going to give us uh, every spiritual blessing. My blessing may, may land here. Your blessing may be over here. Uh, somebody else's blessing right here. Uh, we all will find ourselves in a pot of blessings. Amen. Oh, if you just trust in love. Every spiritual blessing that God has for us. And he made it clear in the heavenly realms. I'm not talking about an earthly blessing. I'm talking about a spiritual heavenly blessing. It comes from God, not from somebody who went to Target and bought me something. I want to bless you. I wish I had time to... It targets is okay or, or, or sticks or whatever, wherever we go shop. I want to give you this spiritual, I want to give you this blessing right here. I'm not talking about that kind of blessing. Oh, look what someone bought me. Wasn't that nice? That was a blessing. Yes, it was. I, that's fine. I'm not talking about that blessing. Don't confuse that blessing with his blessings. There is a spiritual blessing that trumps all other blessings. Uh, your earthly blessings will rust and rot and wear out. Oh, I wish I could get this thing going. Your earthly blessings will just, uh, just uh, deteriorate. It, it will just fade away. Your earthly blessings will, will, will cause you to take it back to the manufacturer because it's, it doesn't work the way. But your spiritual blessings 
Oh, my God, your spiritual blessings, those blessings that come from heaven, they will never rot. They will never break down. They will never waste. They will never quit working on you. They will always be with you because God says, I so love the world that I'm going to give them a spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing that I can put my hands on, it belongs to all of you. All of you. Somebody please get this. Sometimes even we get tired of being a blessing to someone else. Can I tell the truth? Sometimes we have to say, okay, time out. I need to take a break. We, we, we need to just find a way to, to just curl up and, and rejuvenate and regain. But God's blessings through Jesus Christ will never ever retreat on you. <laughs> Jesus will never say, I'm too tired, call me up tomorrow. He will never say, uh, get back with me a little later. Are y'all with me? I'm trying to get through, I'm trying to get through. You have been blessed in the heavenly realms. With every spiritual blessing in Jesus. Every spiritual blessing. Deuteronomy 28.3 reminds us, you will be blessed in the city. I don't care what they say about the city. Whatever's going on in the city is finding its way in the county. Come on, y'all. You can move far west if you want to. All right. In the un incorporated, uncorporated area. You will be blessed in the city. Stop running. Stop running. You will be blessed in the country, your towns and your fields. Let me translate fields into your workplaces, your homes. You will be blessed. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. 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 That's what I call love. I'm finishing up. The text says in Jesus, in Jesus, it's if you follow Ephesians, it's in Jesus, it's in Jesus, it's in Jesus, it's in Jesus. It's saying it about five or six different times. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus. The, the, the writer wants you to know something. It's, it's a main theme right there. In Jesus, whenever a word is repeated over and over and over, the writer's trying to get you to understand. There, there's a message, there's a theme right there. Follow the theme and you'll get the whole enchilada. It's in Jesus, the one God loves. Loves offer redemption. Jesus' love bring us redemption. We don't belong to the devil. Love came through Jesus, uh, the kinsman, and Jesus brought us back. He brought us back from being in spiritual slavery. What are you saying, Pastor? What are you talking about, spiritual slavery? Quit all that stinking thinking. Stop player hating. It's quiet on me now. I'm not... Stop saying what you don't like. Pick out the things that you like. Pick out the things that you see that are positive. A uh, spiritual slavery, slaves to sin. Dead in our transgressions. Guilty. Punishable by death. Not deserving to gather the crumbs under the table. Wrong. But love came down. Love came down. And when love came down and, and in, in him we have been redeemed, bought back, released, set free. And through his blood we have forgiveness and we have hope and we have peace and we have joy and we have his love. And you ask me what love's got to do with it? 
Well, in Jesus, this is what love has to do with. In Jesus, we are blessed with every blessing. In Jesus, we were chosen. In Jesus, we were adopted. In Jesus, we were redeemed. In Jesus, we were saved. In Jesus, we were sanctified. In Jesus, we were satisfied. When love comes knocking on your door, let them in. When love comes knocking on the church door, let love in. Because what the world needs now what the world needs now we've got enough mountain we got all of this we need love sweet love can somebody say amen, amen. say amen again amen. what the world needs now is love we've got enough scientists we have enough mountains Dion says We have enough bridges. We have the technology to send people to the moon and camp out. We can build skyscrapers. We've got the best, we're supposed to have the best defense in the country. What the world needs is Jesus. What the world needs is Jesus. Love, sweet love in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God a praise that just would make him knock his socks off. You know, I remember I was researching, I was going back into some of the songs that I used to listen to. And Teddy Pendergrass came up, and he talked about it. It feels so good loving somebody when somebody loves you back. Can I just tell you, do you know how to win, how to get to God's heart? God loves you. It feels so good. It would be so good if you just love God back. It feels so good loving somebody when somebody loves you back. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to stand with me this morning. The arms of Christ are open. I mean, we don't, we don't, we don't ask, are you saved or if you're not saved? We don't, we don't ask that. We don't ask that from the pulpit. We don't ask that. It's been a it's been a great time to, to share these four characteristics of Advent with you. But the question is, what are you going to do with them? What are you going to do with your hope? What are you going to do with your peace? What are you going to do with your joy. What are you going to do with that love? What are you going to do with it? You know, it's easy to gather like this. It's easy. It's easy to gather, put clothes on, gather, come on, set your clock, watch, whatever, gather. It's easy to do that. That's not much of a challenge talking to believers and Christian folk here today. What are you going to do with hope? What are you going to do with your peace? What are you going to do with your joy and your love? How are you going to react when someone gives you a cold shoulder? Hey, Hey, Amen. with love. How are you going to hold on when, when you feel hard pressed on every side with a peace that surpasses? Amen. 
What are you going to do when you get the news that everything is just caved in and is trying to destroy you? You're getting attacked from here and here and here and here and here. You need to pull out your joy and sin. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I got joy in Jesus. What are you going to do when, when someone loves you, but uh, uh, they, you, you love somebody, but they're not loving you back? Yeah, what are you going to do? I say it like this. I love you anyway. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's that agape love. That's that agape love. Oh, find a way to go in and burn the hate up. Strike a match to the hate. And then let love come forth. Yeah. Yeah. This is a challenging time. Y all, y all, you all ought to just praise God for yourselves for just hanging in there in 2022. When they told you, they told you to do this and we did that. And they said do this and did this. And Channel 5 said this way. Channel 4 said this way. 2 said this way. Everybody was coming at us trying to give us the best protection. And, and then we got national information on it. And we was just, just going around. Just, this, just going in all kinds of direction. And I had to stop and say, isn't that just like the world? Ain't nobody taking time to listen to the Lord. What are you saying, God? Hmm. So I'm asking you, you walk out of here from these four weeks that we've, we've, we've exegeted and we, we've talked and preached about the advent, the coming. We'll do this again next year. We, we know Jesus symbolically is coming every year. He's coming every day. Yeah, you got to wait next year here every day but what are you going to do with the hope what are you going to do with the peace what are you going to do with your joy what are you going to do with the love and don't think that you will never have to pull those things out and start using them because guess what the minute you walk out of this door the minute you leave out of here that's when you're going to need to pull up hope and you're going to need to pull up peace and you're going to need to pull up joy and you're going to need to come on out love I need you now love I need you love Christ is uh, coming forth in salvation. And so for those who may not know this, but hear it for the first time, those online, this is a prayer of salvation. Prayer of salvation. This is an invitation to salvation. So I want everybody, even at home, stand, remain standing. If you're able close your eyes with me and bow your heads and if you already know Jesus if you know him I need for you to be interceding for those who don't know him I know you know somebody <coughs> that should know Jesus I want us all to pray this prayer together out loud. For those who are praying this prayer for the first time, we've got you covered. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll support you. You're in the family of God now. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess that Jesus is Lord. And I believe he died on the cross for my sin. And on the third day, you raised him from the grave. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. <coughs> Forgive me and wash me. Make me whole, Lord Jesus. I invite you <coughs> into my heart, into my soul. <coughs> To be the Lord of my life. 
to be the Lord over my family, to be the Lord over my finances, to be the Lord over my health. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I will be empowered to live a life that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Welcome to the family of God. Give God a hand praise. You may be seated. We have a wonderful, wonderful treat next week, next week, and then before next week, Saturday, Christmas Eve, or yeah, Saturday, Christmas Eve, uh, two things are going to happen here. I just got information from Thomas Dunn Food Group. They want to set up again out there at 630, and they want to pass out food because we know somebody, right, somebody will not have an opportunity to sit down at a table. We're going to try to prevent all that we can with Thomas Dunn Group. They're going to pass out food at 630. So I'm letting you know now, letting you know now, if you are available, come on out. I will be here. And the food will go so quick because the people come out. I mean, 80, 90 some odd people came out Thanksgiving Eve. And so that's when I had an opportunity to present myself as a pastor of the church and open up the doors to invite them to receive the Holy Ghost food if they so choose to. So if you want to, if you're not too busy, I know it's Christmas Eve, but also from five to six. So since you're going to be here already, I don't hear nobody. <laughs> since you're going to be here already, <clears throat> you might as well stay because we're going to have our Christmas Eve candlelight service and we're going to have a devotion coming from Reverend Alice Blaylock. She will be preaching the word. Amen. So we're going to have some songs. We're going to have some candlelight. We're going to have some preaching. And then I'm going to go out there and help them get set up to pass out food for the folk in our community. Y'all hear me? For the folk in our community that are looking for food. So I want to give them, I want to put a stain on their minds that they know that, the, that we are connected to Thomas Dunn and that this is not the only time that they can come and get food. They can come and get food here because we are Union Memorial. We believe in serving the least, the last, and the lost. Am I with, are you with me? I'm with you. And so again, and then on Christmas morning, we're going to have the message brought to us by none other than Reverend Dr. John Hayward. But put your hands together. <clears throat> so the Godfather of soul. And he's going to minister to our souls, you all, Christmas morning. That's a very, very unique time. Because guess what? How often do we have Christmas on Sunday? So it's a blessing to have him here with us. Amen. And he just celebrated a birthday. Amen. And so that means he just didn't get older. He got wiser. Amen, Dr. Hayward. Amen for you. And so we praise God. Now listen, also I want to say this. When you leave this sanctuary, go out and support the Usher's annual bake sale because they, they've got some great bakery out there, pies, cakes, donuts, all that stuff that the, my nutritionist is telling me to stay away from. But I did contribute. I bought a pie for moi. <laughs> and uh, you heard me get that pie in my office because... Yeah, so please, those are the things I want to announce to you all. I'm going to ask that uh, uh, Ms. Hoosman come, our worship leader, come and give us a few more and guide us in ways to give. I want to ask you, have you been blessed this morning? Yes, sir. Have you been blessed this morning? Oh, I bless the name of the Lord this morning. I bless his holy name this morning. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Severs. Let's do a little bit better with that round of applause. Because I look out here and I look at your beautiful faces. And I look at what we've been through over the last few years. 
and to see us coming back into this church and to see the hearts, I swear to goodness, I've been so full of the Holy Spirit this morning, I just kept glancing back. I just kept looking to my left and looking to my right and saying, thank you, Jesus, for bringing us back. And thank you, Pastor Settles, for leading us to being back. So we have so much to be blessed for. I plan to be here Christmas Eve. I plan to see all of you, and I expect everyone to bring somebody else with you and hold their hand through this Christmas season for the reason why we're really here, and that's to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 So now it's time to give back a little bit to Union Memorial, and you can make it a lot. It don't have to be a little bit. It can be a lot. So how do we, how do we give? We have several different ways to give back to the church. You can go through our website at unionmemorialstl.org, and you can hit the button in the center of the page, and it'll take you to online giving. It also gives you the opportunity to set it up on an automated schedule as well so that you don't even have to forget. You can just have it there for you and just enjoy service knowing that you've already blessed the service with your gift. In addition, you also, as you exit today, the ushers will have baskets waiting for you at the doors as you exit to give your gifts at that time. And you can always mail your, your gift to 1141 Belt Avenue. So let us please bless this offering that we are about to receive. Oh Lord, you are an abundant God and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today with it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you out of joy and out of peace. We thank you for everything that you do for us. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory in this amazing day. Oh, Lord, thank you. Amen. All right. Uh, do we have any guests with us uh, visiting this morning? If so, please stand so that we can acknowledge you. If they're not with us today, they will be with us on Christmas Eve. Amen. Amen. And online as well, we've welcomed you for continuing to work with worship with us as well. A few extra announcements. Yes, the, the cakes and the pies are out front as you exit today. Please, please take advantage of that. We also have our, our, uh, our uh, offer. Let me, excuse me. You're going to have to help me, uh, Pastor Settles, the, for the, um, goodness. Our special Bible study is coming up this week as well. Can you share that real quick for me? Yeah, uh, Wednesday, 6.30, we have a Bible study, studying still in the, uh, the uh, understanding of Lent, and we start at 6.30. If you are interested, uh, please uh, see Diane. Diane will send out the link to everybody, and I think she's already done that. Send out the link, and Alice, Reverend Alice Blaylock will be leading that study. Uh, that is the second night of the Let It Be Christmas musical that I am narrating in Kirkwood Performing Arts. So she will be leading that Bible study okay. for me. Exciting time, breaking down uh, each of the four characteristics that we talked about, and we're on love now. So she will be leading that, and she will break that down theologically, biblically, and make it contemporary relative to what we experience in love. Wednesday night, 6.30 to 7.30. Thank you. Please join in. Thank you so much. Also, Christmas Eve, yeah. we're starting off at 5 o'clock with the service, uh, food, I mean the service, and then following it up with the food distribution. And one quick reminder, we are still accepting toys on behalf of the Hubert H. Hoosman Circle of Excellence Foundation. If you're interested in donating toys or bikes, please see me after service. Our offices are at 313 South Florissant Road. So with that, remembering our mission, our mission at Union Memorial is to transforming lives, making disciples for Jesus Christ. And our vision is connecting people to God through compelling worship, compassionate outreach, and genuine faith development. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Amen. We have a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to witness today the sacrament, the candidate that will be taking the sacrament of holy baptism. We're going to ask that we move right into this service.
You may join us in your hymnal, page 33, the Baptismal Covenant 1. Brothers and sisters, in Christ through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without a price. Through confirmation and through reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. Acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. So I bring and present to you this morning for baptism. Chante Rene Nepu. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your, sa as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord? in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture Chante, this person, in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life according to the grace given to you will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world Let me read that one more time according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members, faithful members, hallelujah, faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world, I will, will you who sponsor this person support Encourage her in her Christian life. I'm going to address the congregation. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do 
you believe in the Holy Spirit? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. The children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, tell God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his words to the nations, the glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless this gift of water. And Shante, who will receive it, to wash away her sin and to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with the you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Chante, Renee, Dupree, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ, in Jesus Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus with joy and thanksgiving. We welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. I want to welcome our new sister in Christ. I want you to remember your baptism. Be thankful. Remember your baptism. How many of you remember the water? How many of you remember the freshing water? Remember the baptism and be thankful. Remember the water, the cooling water, how it felt when you stepped up to the plate. Remember your baptism and be thankful. This is what we are encouraged to do, to remember the time when it was you there at the fountain. Remember your baptism. It was you standing before the saints. It was you, the water sprinkled. Remember your baptism. Be thankful. It was you calling on the name of Jesus. It was you. And Jesus heard you. He heard your cry. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. And be thankful. Folks, we are encouraged to remember 
this moment that God has laid out for us. This is a sacred time to remember, to remember. Lord Jesus, what was it like when I was offered to come to the pool? Do you remember that time? Do you remember? Do you remember the cooling water? Remember how the water just did something to you? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was our Lord. I ain't going to mess up perms, y'all. It was our Lord. It was our Lord. It was Jesus. Never forget the time when someone, a parent or a friend, walked you up to the church and said, remember your baptism. The whole church was watching you, but not only the church, but Jesus. Jesus was watching you. What's going on, guys? What's happening when, when we understand the sacrament of baptism? What's happening? What does that mean? That means nothing other than God is naming and claiming you as his very own to come into the family of faith. Oh, you don't have to be a certain age to be baptized. You don't have to do that. That's why we have what we call confirmation and all of that great stuff that comes with it. The theology of it. What does it mean to come up to the Lord's table? What does it mean? It means that God is simply naming and claiming you. You belong to me. You belong to me. You were bought with a price. Hallelujah. Remember your baptism. That's why we say remember. Oh, remember the cooling of the water. Remember your baptism. And how the water just trickled down your forehead. Remember. It was a great time. It was a wonderful time. It was a magnificent time. Remember your baptism. Remember, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. This I know. Jesus loves you. This I know. The Bible told me that he loves you. Oh, I know my mama told me. I know your dad told you. And I know everybody in the family told you. But it's different when Jesus tells you, I love you. Remember. Remember, Mildred. Remember. Let's put our hands together now for Shante. She's not a stranger. But she called me up and she said, hey, you know, I've never been baptized and I want to get baptized. Would you baptize me? Amen. She says, what do I need to do? I just says, be, be present. That's all. Be here. Amen. So we welcome you into this family of faith again. Amen. And God is saying, welcome, Shante. Welcome into the spiritual family. Those who sit high and look low. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together. Thank you one more time, you all. Let me see you. I believe that's it. Would you please stand with me? We have, give, we have been given our instructions from Ms. Hoosman and how to, to move out. We have ushering, usher stations here for those, but we want you to all exit that way if you, if you can. Keep your mask on because we know that the flu is still going on out there and everything. And uh, if you keep your mask on while you're exiting and just pull it down to tell them or however you want to maneuver or make that thing work as you purchase the pies and cookies and cakes. Uh, but if you have to, we, we don't want to create a bottleneck out there. But 
we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out in love, right? We'll figure it out in love. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so I, I was just informed that the food pantry folk, time is done, they got a lot of food outside waiting for you all. This is good, wholesome food. Uh, please go out and help yourself. Show some love. It's in the Richmond Center? Thank you, Chester. It's in the Richmond Center. So take a hike over there. Get you some food. It's wholesome food, uh, salads, great food, okay? So again, they are waiting on all of us. Let's, let's show some love. Let's show some love. You may know somebody. Uh, take it to the office or whatever. But you may know somebody who, who's looking for some food or could take some food or whatever. This is not a hand-me-out. This is nothing like that. This is something that we're just trying to make sure that you've got food. Now, why go buy food when you got it right across the street? Let me give you your benediction. There's a blessing in the benediction. There's a blessing. Remember, I said this is a safe place. Now, when you hit the streets, watch how you pump your gas. Watch when you go shopping. Don't go shopping and put your stuff inside your car. Put it in your trunk. And then just the little things that we are so accustomed to doing, we can't do those things anymore. Don't leave your key fob inside the car while you are outside pumping gas. Don't do that. The other day I was pumping gas and I couldn't see on the other side and somebody was blindsiding me and I, I let my gas pump itself and I stepped over and I looked and I was seeing who was over there and it was a female and I said, I'm just checking to see who's around me. She says, well, I was getting ready to come and see who was over on the other side. It's the world we live in. Let us pray. Gracious Almighty God, we thank you for all that's been said and done here today. It is by your grace. It is by the hope. It is by the love, it is by the joy, it is by the peace that we receive Jesus in our hearts and our minds. Bless these, your people, O oh God, as they begin a brand new week. Watch over them. Be with them, O oh God. Nurture them, guard them, guide them, O oh Lord. Give them wisdom, Father. Protect them. But most of all, God, continue to love them because we love you back. All these things, these prayers, and the prayers that have not been mentioned, God, we lift everything up to Jesus. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God a hand. Praise on the way out. God bless you. I'll see you.